Hi, boys and girls. I'm going to read you chapter 10 and 11 of Roscoe Riley today. Chapter 10, Destructo Feet. Roscoe, my dad said when I got home, where are your walkie-talkies and whose gigantic shoes are those? They're Gus's, I explained. He really wants a pair of walkie-talkies, so we're switching for a day. How can Gus's feet possibly fit in your shoes? My mom asked. Toe smushing, I explained. Mom and dad gave each other a kids are crazy look. All that evening and Saturday morning, I wore Gus's shoes. I wore them to the playground. I wore them climbing up to my treehouse in the backyard. I wore them while I played basketball with Max. And you know what? Those rough and toughs got dirty and dusty and dinged up. But they definitely were not interested in dying anytime soon. Clearly, I had to get serious. I ran my fastest. I jumped my highest. I kicked the hardest rocks I could find. But those shoes were still almost as good as new. By Saturday afternoon, it looked like I was going to have to tell Gus that I'd failed. Here, I said when he came over to play, take your rough and toughs back. Turns out they can't be killed. I tried everything. Gus examined one of his sneakers. Amazing, he muttered. That ad is actually true. I've never seen sneakers like this, I said. I can't understand it. I did all the things I usually do with my shoes. Suddenly, another one of my great ideas popped into my brain. Hey, I said with a grin, maybe we need to try some unusual things. Gus grinned back. Like what? He asked. Follow me, I said. I led Gus to the garage and opened my junior handyman toolbox. Hammer anyone? I asked. So the silly boys are trying to hammer up the shoes. Gus chose a blue plastic hammer. I chose a nice yellow pair of pliers. Ratio, I said. Gus hammered his right rough and tough as hard as he could. I squeezed and poked his left rough and tough as hard as I could. Boys, Mom called from the driveway. What are you doing in there? We're just making something, Mom, I yelled back. Unmaking something is more like it, Gus whispered. Well, don't make a mess, Mom called. After five more minutes of hammering and pliering, we checked our work. Gus shook his head. These are like Godzilla shoes. They're indestructible. Nothing's indestructible, Gus, I said. Take it from Mr. Destructo Feet. What else can we do to them? Gus asked. Scissors, I suggested. Too obvious, Gus said. Garbage disposal? Too dangerous, Gus said. Toilet flushing, I said. Gus made a face. Too risky. I threw one of the rough and tufts at the garage wall. It bounced right back to me. Good as new. Face it, Roscoe, Gus said. The shoes beat us, fair and square. Chapter 11, Baby Breaking. Before Gus went home, I asked him to let me keep the rough and tufts for one more day. It wasn't quite time to give up yet. It's hard to accept defeat, especially when you get beaten by a sneaker. I sat near the garage, holding Gus's sneakers in my hands, wondering where I'd gone wrong. Hazel was riding her pink bike up and down the driveway. She was singing, How much is that froggy in the window? I watched her come and go. It's a long driveway with a little bit of a hill. Hazel had to break pretty hard when she got to the bottom. Her tires left a black mark on the cement. Aha, I thought. I ran to get my bike out of the garage. I have only just begun the fight, I said. I laced up Gus's rough and tufts and climbed onto my bike. I sped down the driveway at top speed. Slow down, Roscoe, Hazel called. I slowed down all right, but I didn't use my pedals to break. I used my destructo feet. I dragged those rough and toughs along the cement and stopped just in the nick of time. Roscoe, Hazel said. That's how babies stop their bikes. But I didn't care. When I got back to the top of the hill, I checked my handiwork. So there's Hazel up in the garage and there's Roscoe. Yes, I screamed. The toes were scuffed. Tiny little holes were starting. Victory at last. I went down the hill again, sneaker breaking for the last half. Brothers are so weird, Hazel muttered. After ten more rides, the rough and toughs were looking quite scraggly. Suddenly, I had a gulp moment. I thought about Gus's mom and dad seeing the destructoed rough and toughs. What if they weren't so happy about Gus's shoes dying? Oh, well, I thought... I was just trying to make Gus feel better, and like Mom always says, 
It's the thought that counts. Besides, it was too late to turn back now. I went down that driveway 32 more times. After ride number 32, I checked Gus's sneakers again. The shoes that refused to die were going to need a funeral. All right, so the next chapter, chapter 12, is Everybody's Cool. All right, I'll see you guys later. Bye.